The waltz is a timeless dance, but you're gonna need a few moves to look good and feel confident. Now, whether you've just learned the basic or you're looking to learn some new moves at a social dance or for a wedding or on a cruise ship or even a quinceanera, Megan and I are gonna show you our seven favorite waltz moves for beginners, plus a few bonuses to really make you look like you know what you're doing out there. My name is Brian B. I'm Miss Megan. We're from Louisville, Kentucky, and we've been teaching social dancers for almost 20 years in our studios through our online videos, and we've been able to travel the world doing it too. In today's video, we're gonna give you our seven best beginner waltz steps. You're gonna learn the box. Now, the box is something you might already know, but it is the most fundamental basic. Number two, you're gonna learn the progressive. This is where you're gonna learn to progress down the floor. We're gonna teach you the hesitation or balance step. This is a good step to break, the, break up the monotony of one, two, three, one, two, three. Then we're gonna teach you the left and right turning box. Now these are gonna be vital to help you navigate around the dance floor. Next up will be the underarm turn. The underarm turn always looks impressive and it's important to know. Then we're gonna open things up. We're gonna teach you the front to front and back to back. This is where you're really gonna open up. Plus we got a few bonuses to make you look really cool. And then finally, we're gonna teach you the twinkle and the twinkle with a chasse. This will be your first introduction into the promenade position and that's something you have to master as a ballroom dancer. Make sure you stay to the end of this video. We're gonna put everything in a routine for you to practice, but let's get started with our favorite seven beginner waltz moves. All right, gang, let's get right to it. Let's learn our box. This is the most fundamental pattern of American Waltz. This is our box. One, two, three, and four, five, six. Let's go ahead and lead, do leaders and followers fork. So leaders, we're walking forward on the left foot. Followers are walking back on the right foot. Leaders, we're going to count this. We're going to imagine a box on the floor. We're going to dance one to the side for two, change weight for three. Right foot goes back for us for four, five, six. Let's do it one more time forward, side, together, and back, side, together. For the followers. Followers, we're going back on our right foot. We have back, side, together, forward on the left, side, together. Back, side, together, forward, side, together. And if we turn this sideways to the camera, do the full work so you can see it this way. Leaders, I'm walking forward with a slight heel lead. That's gonna be important. You don't have to get super technical now, but that's gonna matter. For one, on the side, I'm gonna step on the ball of my foot for two, the ball of my foot for three, and I'm gonna lower onto my left foot. Now I'm gonna step back on the right for four, ball of my foot for five, ball of my foot for six, lowering slightly to do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. For the followers. Followers, you're going back on a toe first. So you have back, side on a toe, toe, heel, now you're going forward on a heel, so you have forward heel, toe, toe, heel. So go ahead and watch that footwork if you need to rewind it. The second thing we need to master is our basic frame. This is what the basic frame looks like, ESPN 360 cam, high level stuff. So the things we need to worry about leaders, I'm gonna line myself up here with the back of the camera. I'm gonna take this hand, elbow up, and I'm gonna leave a lot of space right here. This is gonna go underneath the follower's armpit. So this is kind of connected underneath. I imagine if she was shaped like a box, I have half my hand on this side of the box and half on the other side. So I'm kind of wrapping around. I'm not pulling. If you notice, that just stays constant. It's Megan's job. Followers, you're going to have your hands somewhat around their bicep and you're just going to touch their arm with yours. You are not going to lean down mm. on it. Cool, this hand is gonna go up at eye level height. Whose eyes? Her eyes. So if you're shorter, it's gonna go at her eyes. If you're taller, it's gonna go at her eyes. I call this towel on a towel bar. So this is the towel bar, that's the towel. So this is gonna go across, kind of close nice. Again, same thing, I've got a strong what they call frame. So from this elbow to this, uh, my right shoulder stays strong. This adjusts, is Megan a little further away from me, a little wider, a little skinnier, shorter, or taller? This adjusts and this is our frame. Second thing we need to worry about is our alignment. We're always gonna be offset. I'm gonna do this the other way to the camera. I'm always offset, I'm always looking over my partner's right shoulder. Megan's always looking over this shoulder. Ladies, you can imagine that there is a shoe sale going on over this shoulder. So if we turn this back around this way, this is our frame. My right foot is always outside of hers. It's like a three-legged race. Remember when we were tied together in the three-legged race? So this leg is on the outside, Megan's leg is between mine, and this leg is between hers, and hers is on the outside again. We're gonna keep that alignment. Now, whether or not you dance in diaphragm contact, that's the official ballroom term of my right side against her right side, or from a social perspective, I'm a little further away, doesn't matter, but the alignment matters. So this is what our box looks like. One, two, three, four, 
five again. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll let you look at it from the other side. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So make sure you have that. Next up is gonna be the progressive because ultimately we want waltz to move around the floor. So we're gonna teach you the progressive step next. All right, step number two is the progressive because ultimately waltz works. If this is my dance floor, waltz is gonna work counterclockwise around the outside of the floor. So we're gonna need to be able to progress with our footwork. So this is how we're gonna do it. This is called the progressive step. It looks like this. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So you can see we progress down the floor. So let's learn the footwork for that. This is where the alignment we talked about in our bodies is gonna matter. But let's look at the footwork first. If we're progressing down the floor, let's actually do this backwards to the floor. If we're progressing down line, I'm gonna step with my left foot just like I did with the box. One, two, three, we already know that. Now this is different. I'm gonna have to, instead of step backwards for the box, I'm gonna step forward with my right foot on a heel lead for four, five, six. If we did that again, we're walking forward with the left to change weight, then the right to change weight. For the followers. Followers, you're going back on your right foot first. So we have back, side, together. Now we're gonna go back with our left foot for back, side, together. If we And let's flip that around the other way. Then we have back, side, together, back, side, together together. Cool. So that is the footwork. The tricky part about this is it's the first time I'm stepping forward with my right foot in front of Megan, which is where this alignment matters. So we've learned the box so far. One, two, three. In the box, this foot goes back. In the progressive, it goes forward. I'm going to dance one, two, three. So if I did that from the other side, it looks like this. One, two, three, four, five, Six. Now the question is, how the heck would you know the difference? How would you know the difference? As we're lowering, we dance our basic one, two, three. At this point, my leg, as I'm lowering, I'm slightly sending that thigh out of Megan right there, and that tells her that's where we're going next. If in my box, one, two, three, I'd be moving this leg back, and if you can see from the other side, if I'm moving backwards, Megan's following my leg backwards. If I'm doing the progressive, she's following it forwards. And that's how you know the difference between the box and the progressives. So next up, we're gonna do a very easy step called the hesitation. All right, take a deep breath. That's what the third step is gonna be. It's called the hesitation. It's gonna be a little bit of a break in the action. So we're not gonna to have to do as many steps. The hesitation is just like it sounds. We hesitate. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it gives us a chance to breathe, gives us a little something different to do. If we look at the footwork, we're actually going to do this forward and back like we did before. So instead of stepping on every beat, I'm going to step slowly for one, two, three, and I'm going to step this foot back for one, two, three. If I do that again, one, two, three, and one, two, three. Followers footwork. Followers, you're going back. We have one pulling in for two, Three, and then we go forward for one, two, three. Now, if we look at this sideways, the question is, how does your partner know it's a, it's a, it's a uh, hesitation? And it's just like it sounds. If I take a normal step and waltz, it's a full step, I'm already there. In the hesitation, instead of on the one being right there and stepping powerfully through, I'm slowing it down. A one, two, three, a four, five, six. So this would be a basic in the box where I'm moving at a regular rate. And this would be the hesitation. I'm dancing much slower in my footwork. If we show that to you from the other side, very easy step to lead and follow. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, because we're a social dance channel, we know that you're going to try to dance these socially in a social setting, a ballroom dance, a cruise, something like that. Again, how would your partner know? It's real simple, we talked about it before. This connection here, Megan is connected back and into that, right? So if this keeps moving, she keeps moving. If it stops moving, she stops moving. So if we go a little bit, oop, you can see I've stopped her. So because she's connected to that, as I dance slowly, she's monitoring that hand and dancing slowly. If I were to dance more quickly into, say, a turning box, she would follow the pace of that hand. That is your third step, the hesitation. Okay, so in high school, this is all I knew to slow dance. 
but then I learned that I needed to be able to rotate my slow dance. And that's what we're going to learn next. It is the left turning box. So we're going to take that box and move it around the room. Let's take a look at what it looks like. This is a big fundamental step to being able to dance waltz. Our turning box looks like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. If we completed it, it would look like that. Is it a left turning box? There is a right turning box. We'll get to that later. But this is the left turning box. So let's look at the footwork from the, we're actually going to do this sideways because it is going to rotate. So I'm dancing forward for one, but I'm going to turn a quarter turn for two and pull my feet together for three. So let's do that again. We have one, two, three. Now I'm stepping back with my right foot like I would in a regular box, but I'm turning to my left for four, five, six. Let's do that again right from here. We have one, two, three, and four, five, six. Now followers footwork. Followers, you're going back first. So we back, quarter turn, side, together. Now we're going to go forward in a quarter turn. Forward, side, together. Back again with your right foot. Back, quarter turn, side, together. Then forward, quarter turn, side, together. So again, how are we communicating this? It goes back to lesson number one, the frame. So Megan stays with my frame. So as I dance the quarter turn box, the left turning box, I step forward for one, I turn two, three. This is the tricky part because we're going backwards for four, five, six. Left foot goes forward for one, two, three, and four, five, six. This is the easier of the turning boxes, but the question people have is what if I don't make a full quarter turn? No big deal. We're gonna aim for it because we're in a room that has four walls likely, and so we're gonna aim, to, I'm gonna aim to face that wall on the first part of the box. Then I'm going to aim to face this wall on the second part. Now this wall on the third part, and so on and so forth. Now there's two things that are going to crop up. What if I don't make the full quarter turn? Not a big deal. If I only make a little bit of a turn, I almost have a variation. I didn't quite make it to that wall. No big deal. Why? Because we're still lined up. My partner's still in her window. We're still dancing together. I didn't quite make the quarter turn. No big deal. I'm going to try to make a little bit more next time, and maybe I can figure it out. Now, from the follower's perspective, what do you think about Megan to be able to feel that? Uh, I am just trying to stay stuck to this arm. So it's going to give you a very good indicator whether we're going full quarter turn or if uh, we start from the beginning or if we go a little less. I'm only going as far as this allows me to go around the corner. We call this in the studio using the force. So even if I didn't touch Megan and she just stayed in this window, she would have some ability, if she knows her box and her turning box footwork, to stay with me as we danced. As promised, here's a bonus. It's the right turning box. The right turning box is just what it sounds like. It's like a box, but it turns to the right. And this is a skill we're gonna have to need to know to navigate ourselves around the floor. So we're going to orient ourselves this way. To get to that box turning right off the leader's right foot, I have to do half of a regular box or half of a progressive first. So I have to dance one, two, three to free up my right foot to get ready to turn. Same thing we talked about in the right turning box. I'm going to aim for a quarter turn for four, five, six. Now the left foot goes back turning to my right. This is tricky. One, two, three, right foot forward four, five, six, left foot back, one, two, three, and we finish with four, five, six. So if we do that one more time, we'll have Megan narrate her footwork. All right, so we have half of that progressive, so we have one, two, three. Now we're gonna use our left foot to curve to the right, so we have four, five, six, curving forward a quarter turn, one, two, three, back for four, five, six, curving forward, one, two, three, and you have to finish with half a progressive for four, five, six. So this is a tricky step. The next one we're gonna do is super easy, the underarm turn, you're gonna love that one. But this is tricky as we get a little close to the camera because I have to step forward with my right foot and it feels like Megan's in my way. So that's why that window, you see that ballroom dance, you know, shapes that we have. It's not vital to have that shape. It is vital to stay on that side because when I step with my right foot, Megan has to be able to get out of my way. Now this is tricky for us as the leaders because I'm stepping back with the right foot, turning to the right, and I've taught a lot of dancing. You're gonna wanna step with that right foot and mess it up. But I wanna step with my left foot back 
and my right foot forward and left foot back. If we keep turning, right foot forward, left foot back, and right foot forward. And Miss Megan, what do you think about as the follower to feel that turning box, the right turning box? Pretty much the same thing as you do in your left turning box. You just wanna make sure that you're staying in your window the whole time. That way you have a good idea of how much your leader is moving. And that is the right turning box. Next up is the underarm turn. You're definitely gonna want into that. It's gonna make it look super cool. All right, this might be the most impressive step. It's the underarm turn. We've taught tons of couples here at our studio and we always teach the underarm turn and that always impresses. So we're gonna dance a basic box and we're gonna dance an underarm turn and finish with a basic box. So the good news is we already know the footwork is the leader. So leaders, I'm gonna do this side two. And leaders, we're stepping forward in a basic box. We finish a basic box. Now we use half of a left turning box and then we finish with a basic box. So if we do that one more time, since you already know the full work and then we've got a few details to cover for the followers. So we dance one, two, three, finish the box, four, five, six. Now we do part of a turning box, quarter turn to my left and finish with a regular box. Now the followers have completely different footwork. Completely. We're going to do a half a box. So we have one, two, three. We're still going to go forward on four, four. Now we start to curve around for five, six. We curve for one, two, three, and then we get to straighten up for four, five, six. So let's do that one more time and then we're going to cover the biggest key that's going to make this go wrong when we talk about lead and follow. That would be follow and forward. I didn't understand. Sorry. What did you say? Follow and forward. All right, so followers, one more time. We have back, side, together, forward, out and around, then forward, side, together, and finish your box. So here's what it looks like. This is actually really easy to lead, but there's one thing that's gonna go wrong, so I'll tell you what it is. So in a perfect world, one, two, three, I start to get this hand ready on four. I start to send her out on five, and I send her out on six. We continue for one, two, three. We might not be linked up here, no worries, because we have this window to rely on. I finish my box, Megan comes right back to me. So let's do that one more time, then we'll cover that key that might go wrong. We have one, two, three. At this point, leaders, I have to get this hand ready. By ready, I mean I let go of it and slide my fingers down, which clues her in that she's not staying in this close, close hold. So I step back, side, together. Now at this point, we're all going this way. My left foot's going that way. Her right foot's going that way. Both of our hands are going that way. And they don't turn back till the end when we finish up. And that's what's going to go wrong. So we've learned, we've taught this to lots and lots of people and the followers tend to turn right back. Here's what's going to go wrong. Megan's going to do it wrong for you. One, two, three. We do a good job of sending her out and she turns right back to us and wrecks the move on us. So leaders, Here's what I need to do, two things. Followers, you need to know your footwork, but I'll explain. We have one, two, three. Leaders, I'm gonna get this left hand ready. I'm gonna make sure she goes out and away from me. By make sure, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna use my right hand. I'll demonstrate that from the other side. Now I wanna make sure that this hand goes down line to get her to go down line before she turns back. And you'll be able to see it better on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've made sure with my right hand to get her to go out. Now with this hand, I don't want to pull it back too soon. I want to make sure that we both take that step forward before I turn the hand back. We're not quite linked up, no big deal. We get back close together. And there is your underarm turn for waltz. Next up, step number six. All right, this move is called front to front, back to back. Not exactly like that, but you'll get the idea. So we're going to have to use the underarm turn we used before to get into this. So there's the underarm turn, but here is my front to front, back to back. Front to front, back to back. And we're gonna come out in a promenade position. We're gonna explain that. We're even gonna explain that in a different video. So we're gonna use the underarm turn to get into this. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, I'm going to patty cake this on this hand. Now from here, we're going to do our footwork separately. My right foot is going forward. We're going this direction for one, two, three. We're putting our backs to our partner. 
Then I'm stepping with the left foot, Megan's stepping with the right foot. We go front to front, one, two, three. If we continued, one, two, three, and one, two, three. Now to come out, we're gonna use our inside foot, my right foot, Megan's left foot, to come back out in a promenade position. Let's look at that one more time. Megan can talk through her footwork. From the underarm turn? From the underarm turn. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. So right here, followers, you have your left foot free. We're gonna go forward down the line. So you have forward, side, together. Now right foot is free. Forward, side, together. If we did it one more time, forward, side, together and then we have forward side rotating into promenade together and uh, left foot for us forward side together cool so let's look at how we make this happen we're going to go a little further back again we're going to use the underarm turn to get into it there's other ways but when we put this in a routine for you at the end we're going to use the underarm turn so we'll stick with it here one two three four five six there's the underarm turn the difference is i'm going to patty cake this hand with this right hand, telling her we're not going that direction. Easy way to remember this, the foot that's free, that's faced the direction we're going is always the one we're stepping on. One, two, three. So again, the foot that's free, my left foot, her right foot, we do it again. And once we get here, we'll do it a couple times. When we get done with this, we're gonna switch ourselves to what we call a promenade position. We're gonna cover this in detail in the twinkle. So we step through, back, and together. So if we look at that the other direction, we have our half a box, underarm turn, front to front, back to back, front to front, back to back, back to our promenade position. And then I have a pro tip for you. You want the pro tip? Here's the pro tip. The pro tip comes on what I do with this hand to make you look cooler and a little less amateurish. So we go through here. My hand is on top. If you can see this, my hand is on top. I want to be able to let go of this and switch it to underneath. I'm going to explain that in a minute. Right now it's on top. I want to switch it and let go underneath. And I'm going to do that in the transition. So now this is going to be a little bit more natural. Front to front, back to back, come back the other way back and front. Last time from this side. We have the half a box, underarm turn. As I do this front to front and I get this connection, I'm going to switch this hand underneath, five, six. Now the foot that's heading towards the direction of travel is the one we move with, front to front, back to back, and we finish in a promenade position, which we're going to cover in the next video, you have to know the promenade position to be good at waltz. So have you ever seen Scent of a Woman? I know that was tango, but this is the promenade position. If I had a rose, I would have it. That's your classic ballroom dance promenade position. We're going to teach it in a move called the twinkle. So the twinkle looks like this. This is our closed position for waltz. We've covered that in our basic stuff. But I'm going to need to dance a twinkle to get to a promenade position and back to a closed position. So quickly define promenade position. Everything is the same in our ESPN 360 cam. The only thing different is we're gonna turn our feet and our heads in the direction of travel. ESPN 360 cam. This is gonna make you look cool because your head's gonna be outside. Megan's head's gonna be outside this. We don't want this look here. This kind of looks weird. So how are we gonna get there? It looks a lot like <clears throat> the first half of our box. One, two. But as I pull my feet together, I'm gonna be shifting my upper body slightly this way slightly this way to allow us to turn our feet and finish it back out. If we look at it from the other angle, one, two, three. I shift my feet this direction and we finish that direction. Now Megan still has her window, so if we do it from this direction. We're gonna do it once right and once wrong. This is pretty correct, where you can still see Megan the whole time. This is what sometimes happens. For whatever reason, Megan gets stuck back in front of me and then it wrecks the moves we're going to do next. So you want to stay in that window. Leaders, when we turn her to promenade, you can practice this. This is what I want to practice. If we do it from behind, I want to practice this. So you can see my upper body is slightly turning her this direction, but my feet are happening 
are turning that direction. So we do it, my footwork, and then Megan will talk about her footwork so you can kind of mirror me. One, two, as I pull my feet together, I shift them this direction. My frame or my shoulders are still facing this wall. And then the inside foot moves. So if Megan wants to describe her footwork. This direction? Sure. All right, so followers, we're going like a box. So we have one, two. But when we pull our feet together, we're going to be rotated in this direction. Then we're going to start with our inside foot for forward and rotate back to face our partner for five, six. Let's do that one more time. So you have back, side, rotate, and then forward, side, together. So before you leave us, we have a bonus to this. Let's do it one time, then I'm gonna show you the bonus. It's really easy to do off this, it's a timing change. So first, this is our basic twinkle into what we call promenade position. If we did the bonus, we're gonna do a chasse. One, two, three, one, two, and three, one, two, three. If we did it the other way, and then we'll break this down for you, this is quite cool. We have one, two, three, one, two, and three, one, two, three. So let's talk chasse footwork, and I'm gonna do this in this orientation. So we dance into our promenade, into our twinkle, right? Then I'm gonna dance one, two, and three, and then finish four, five, six. If we did that again, and then we're gonna show you the trick on how to get the follower to do this. One, two, three, one, two, and three, one, two, three. So quickly for Megan's footwork and stay to the end because we're gonna put all of this in a routine that you can practice all the moves in the same order. It's gonna be really good for your learning. All right, followers, we do the first half of our twinkle. So we have one, two, turning, three. Then we have forward, side, together, forward, and then forward, side, together. If we did that again, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six, one, two, three. So how the heck would we get her to follow the timing change? We talked about it before in the hesitation. In the hesitation, we move slowly when we want her to move slowly. In the chasse, we're gonna move a little faster than normal. We'll do it this way. We have one, two, three. If this was the basic twinkle, I'm done right here, right? But because she's gonna feel me moving, she's gonna continue with that chasse. Now, two parts to that. Number one, you have to know that it's possible as the followers. You have to know that the chasse exists. Otherwise, it would be fairly difficult to lead and follow it. But provided you do, if I move fairly aggressively through that, I can get Megan through. Now, All right, now you've learned the moves. How do we apply it in real life? We're gonna show you a routine that can help you practice. So dancing has been everything to me over the past 25 years. It's produced some of the coolest memories in my life. It's produced some of my best friends. Miss Meg and I have danced every week together for the past 25 years, and it's been a great journey. Yeah. What? <laughs> 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 18 years. We've been dancing 18 years together, and we're super passionate about sharing dance with as many people as we can, and our YouTube channel is a big part of that. But the coolest thing we've created to help you get better at dancing is our online learning platform. You could try it right here for 14 days for free. All the dances you've ever wanted to learn from waltz and foxtrot to two-step or west coast swing and even the hustle, you can learn that. It's 14 days for free and we'd love for you to give it a try and then report back to us and, and tell us your story and how dance is impactful in your life. Hope to see you on the dance floor soon.